There's a wonderful fellow in the United Kingdom. He runs a, uh, a gun company, or maybe it's suspended right now. Anyway, I think his name is Mick, and if you punch it in on Google, hopefully you'll see Mick's guns. I was talking to him for a few years because I always wanted to buy a Shogren shotgun. And he had a couple of Shogrens. He, had, he seemed to have a good supply of Rook rifles, all kinds of interesting guns. I, I think he even had like a harpoon gun. Anyway, I don't know what went wrong, uh, but it, it never worked out. And there were some complexities with his business and so on. Um, uh, in case you're watching this somehow, Mick, I, I hope we can still make a deal for one of those Shogrens you seem to be able to dig up. But in, in any event, I, I kept looking for a Shogren and I watched the videos on YouTube that you all probably watched. And it, you, you may not be familiar with this shotgun at all, so I'll get to the shotgun in a moment. But um, I did finally buy one from a brilliant fellow. And um, I have to say brilliant because this is some kind of very capable young fellow in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And this is an antique shotgun. I acquired it and it arrived. I'm not sure I ever spoke with Jared on the phone, but uh, he was the recipient of one of our free actions and 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 uh, levers or levers, depending on how you want me to pronounce it. So we'll see what he comes up for the falling block single shot. But um, I guess it might have been an email he sent me, and it more or less said, and I'm 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 just teasing here. It more or less said it works perfectly, except it doesn't work. So, I, I, and that's actually true. It does work perfectly, but you can't load more than two shells and it's supposed to be a five shot shotgun. But this happens all the time in gun collecting and there are never any hard feelings. And um, I'll start out with something even funnier. So this is a Shogren shotgun. It's a, uh, a Swedish design, but I guess it was manufactured in Denmark. And I'm, you know, I'm getting a lot of opinions and advice about all kinds of details on these shotguns and everything's appreciated and here's the original browning broken butt plate that came with the shotgun uh, but jared tells me that he is going to 3d print with he does all that stuff um, a new butt plate for me so hopefully that'll happen it's not in the best shape but you know how many shogren shotguns are there um, not very many. I, some people tell me 5,000, somebody else told me 7,500. I'm not sure what the attrition rate is for these shotguns. Maybe it's high. I don't know. This one is, like I said, not in great shape, but it still works. So to me, I think it's a fairly durable design. Um, now I'll skip ahead to a Patreon video that I made, and I have no idea what happened to me but I decided I had to understand how the Shogren worked. Just because it's so unusual, and as you can see, it's, it's, almost, it's almost as if a piece of the action is, is missing. The, the bolt runs on, on rails. But getting back to the Patreon video, I took the entire gun apart, down to its smallest pieces. And as I did this, I took pictures with my phone of what was going on and I'm glad I did because this is one of the trickiest guns to put back together. Um, what I usually do is if I take a gun apart and then I start putting it back together again after it's clean and everything and I'm having trouble understanding the interrelationship of parts, I usually um, on one day sort of reach a wall where my brain just can't figure out how this thing went together and it's happened with other guns before. And I usually just set it aside and then wait a day or two. And somehow, I don't know whether I'm making this up or not, but the brain, I think, works on it without you thinking about it. And then you pick it up the next time. And somehow it all makes sense. And getting back to this exact design, um, if one of you is sitting with a box of parts, um, I don't often claim to know anything. But I can help you get this back together again. It is, it's an extremely intelligent system. Very unusual for 1908. And I can't say I know all that much about the designer, but I wish I knew the gentleman or had a chance to. But getting back to the shotgun itself, what looks like a risky action is no risk at all. 
um, when this gun fires, there's a delay. It's an inertia system, and that's why I have this beautiful Benelli on the table. This is a 28 gauge. It works on the same inertia system. Um, inertia is that principle in physics, as you know, objects in motion tend to stay in motion, and objects at rest tend, tend to stay at rest unless something that has energy acts upon them. But when you're taking this apart and putting it together, I mean, that's, that's just academic stuff that makes no sense. But um, I studied it and watched the videos on YouTube. There are other people that shoot these, but I couldn't find anybody who was stupid enough to take it apart. So I was looking at it and I was thinking, it, it doesn't work quite the way the people who made the videos say. But I can understand why they're saying what they're saying. Um, in short, the first thing that happens when you fire this amazing shotgun is the, the, the breech bolt, if that's what you want to call this, actually in a way moves forward. A component of it moves forward. And you have to, when, you, when you're putting it together, if you ever do this, which I don't recommend, so you'll kind of just have to trust me. It, it, the videos don't have it right. Um, this guy's a little smarter than all of us. It moves forward slightly, and that's how the beginning, the, the unlocking motion begins. But I set it on the YouTube video, then I put the gun back together again, and I was still uncomfortable with what I said until I took out this Benelli, which I've had for years. It's a 28 gauge, and as you all know, um, as far as machining and so on, there's nobody as good as Benelli. This is an inertia system, so the barrel does not move, and there's no gas. Same with the Sjogren from Sweden. It's far simpler than the Browning Auto 5, and actually simpler than just about everything, because it uses inertia to operate, but I repeat myself. Anyway, I looked at the Benelli, and the bolt head moves. This will be hard for you to digest all of this. The noise that you hear, the squeaking sound, that's the, the recoil spring. You see this little arm here? That carries the bolt energy into a spring in the stock, which then pushes the action forward. So I mean, in a video this won't look all that good, but I, I, this is the same principle. And I set it aside and I thought, should I have it on the table or should I not have it on the table? So I put it on the table because it's this works this exactly the same as this Sjogren, except they decided to trap the bolt in a closed action so that you don't have this apparent scariness of a visible breech block, which really makes no difference because the this can't go anywhere. It's on rails and there's a block at the back of the action. In any event, I don't know how I'll get this to you, but Benelli, on page 10, writes the best explanation about how their shotgun works, and th that applies 100% to the Sjogren. Now, how this gentleman figured this out way back when, I don't know, but he did. Anyway, getting back to the operation, this is a takedown. You can watch the Patreon video. I don't want to take it apart again right now, but Taking the barrel off is no big deal. It's actually a lot like a Model 12 Winchester, uh, which this would be an earlier gun because the Model 12, I think 1912, unless I'm wrong. Anyhow, when you fire, um, I'll just show you quickly. See these grooves here? That's how this action locks. A bar inside the breech block drops down and that secures the action. Release of the breech block is very sim similar to a Remington 870, which this predates by a long, long time. If you close the breech bolt, and this will help current owners, so you close the breech bolt, and then you decide you're going to fire the gun. So you fire. It's a striker fire. There's no hammer. Uh, and then you go to open the bolt. You can't open it because the inertia system has it locked, and there's been no unlocking movement to activate the system. So how do you get this open? Um, so what you do is you'll see a lever here at the back and you simply rotate that up and then rotate it back. Now we've cocked the striker. 
which is, allows the locking mechanism to move back up and it's unlocked. There are all kinds of tricks and secrets in the components of this action. And I'm so fascinated by this and how smart it is that I wish there was a, a way for me to manufacture 5,000 more, but that may not be possible. Um, you'll notice that la lazy closing of the breech block. Um, as I told you, this doesn't fire five shots because uh, something's wrong in the magazine tube. I don't know what, but um, that's not a bad thing. That slow motion movement is not a negative. These guns don't have to reload. Semi-autos don't have to reload lightning fast. Um, and when trying it, I actually found the slow movement kind of appealing. Um, you, some of you may wonder what's returning the action to battery. So if you remove this little screw here, then there's a long spring, the action spring, action return spring inside this rail of the receiver and the breech bolt of course is, is sliding on that rail. Other than, other than the way it operates, the overall function of the shotgun is quite familiar. The safety is good, trigger is good, um, obviously the steel of the barrel and the components of the action are excellent. Um, in terms of engine ingenuity and where it ranks in my collection of shotguns, it's an, it's an easy number one for shotguns. Just the most compelling shotgun to fire and own. I wish I had one in better condition and uh, Jared did have some uh, another one or he may have more. I don't know. I'll try to see whether I can buy something better from him. But even in this less than perfect condition, it still was a fantastic shotgun. And all the advantages that Benelli claims are true. I went through this before filming. You know, it's, it's again not easy to convey what I observe in these guns, but I mean this thing in the first place must weigh four pounds. Um, I would have to check the book. Maybe it's slightly more than that. Ultra lightweight mechanism. No gas ports, no carbon buildup, no nothing. Um, about the only negative that some of you may know is in order for an inertia system to work, the shotgun has to move when you fire it. So I tested this and if you put this against a door or a a two by four, uh, the action doesn't open. It, it, it has to move, but you probably all know that. And that's why Benelli didn't use this or even submit their recoil action to the military when they were trying to get mil spec um, approval or their uh, whatever it is, M4, which I have. It, the M4 has dual gas ports on the barrel because that shotgun will always work if the shock if the shot shell goes off. Uh, in this case, well, of course, it won't work if the shot shell doesn't go off, but that's an ammunition failure. Uh, but if the shot shell goes off and this can't move in some combat situation, then the gun won't operate. So it's a little bit of something. And waterfowl hunters would know that from shooting straight up. These Benelli's won't cycle or they'll fail to eject or fail to feed. Um, that's about it. I thought it was something worth sharing with you just because of how extraordinary this is. I wish there were more of these around and maybe somehow I'll get through to mix guns in the UK and get another one or from Jared in Saskatoon. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and please subscribe and um, if you can support me on Patreon, I'd very much appreciate it. Thanks again and take care.